Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the William Lowell Putnam Mathematical Competition 2008, problem A4. Let f be a function from the set of real numbers into itself, defined by this implicit formula. f of x is either x, if x is less than or equal e, or it is x times f of natural log of x, if x is greater than e. So, it's not an explicit, but it's implicit formula. The question is, does the following series from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over f of k, does it converge? It's a beautiful problem. Here are my hints. First hint. Product of two positive, strictly increasing functions is positive and strictly increasing. Well-known fact. And now, we wish, uh, you should show the following, that if our function f is strictly increasing, that it is continuous by partitioning the set of real numbers into pieces, minus infinity e, e, e to the power of 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 e, and so on. And look what's happening. And now we will use this well-known uh, method of determining if a series converges, the integral test for series convergence states that if we have some decreasing positive function, for example, 1 over fk, then this series converges uh, if and only if the integral converges. And dealing with integrals, in this case, will be much, much uh, simpler than dealing with series. And for dealing with integral, as I said, let m be greater than or equal 0, Consider this integral, from 1 to e to the power of m, dx over f of x, try to express by, by substitution, try to express this integral in terms of integral from 1 to m of dx over f of x. We'll give this problem a try. Right. So, let's start with partitioning the set of real numbers into pieces and evaluating the function on each of uh, each piece. Right. I will write a few intervals. Right. On the first piece, What's, the, what's f of x? Well, f of x is just x. Nothing wrong here. On the second piece, notice that our argument is already greater than e, so f of x is x times natural log... No, sorry, other way. x times f of natural log of x. And notice that this time our argument, natural log of x, is somewhere between uh, 1 and e. Yes, this right here is between 1 and e, so it's just uh, x, x times natural log of x. All right. Next, we have f of x equals x, again, f of natural log of x, but notice that this time natural log of x is from e to e to the power of e, and we know that uh, by previous part, e on this interval, this function equals uh, natural x times natural log of x. But this time, our argument is not x, but it's natural log of x. So we have x, natural log of x, natural log of natural log of x, and so on. You probably see the pattern for the next next uh, function would be x, natural log of x natural log of natural log of x, natural log, natural log, natural log of x, and so on. You probably clearly can see the pattern. If you, are, if you wish to be very rigorous, prove it by induction or something. I don't wish to do it because I'm convinced. All right. All right. And now, what can, we, what can be said about this function? Well, it can be said that this function, first of all, it's continuous, because only the only source of problems are points, for example, here e e. But notice that if uh, x equals e to the power of e, 
always the last term is one on the left bound of these inter intervals. Yes, for example, natural log of natural log of e to the power of e is one. So it's exactly the same. Likewise here. So maybe let's write my claims. Claim, claims. First, f is continuous. I, I'm convinced. It should be two. <laughs> what else? Well, notice that mm. f is positive on the interval uh, zero plus infinity. Zero plus infinity. How to justify it? Well, let's take a look. If x is greater than zero, this is, of course, greater than zero. Remember that x is greater than e, so we have natural log. Uh, this part right here is always greater than or equal 1. Likewise, this is also greater than or equal 1, this is also, and so on. Everything is well and good, positive. And moreover, last claim, f is strictly increasing. Strictly increasing on the whole set of real numbers. How to justify it? Well, again, the first function is strictly increasing. And notice that each time, on each interval, we are multiplying, we are multiplying uh, positive increasing functions. Product of positive increasing functions are is positive and increasing. So, yes, so these claims have been justified. I believe. All right. And now I will investigate the nature of this integral. So let, let m be greater than or equal to zero. We'll investigate the nature of integral from one e to the power of m uh, dx over f of x. Well, first, I can split this integral into two parts. First part will be from 1 to e. From 1 to e. Uh, dx f of x. And the second part will be from 1, from e, to e to the power of m. All right. Well, first part from 1 to e, what is it? Well, f of x is just x. And for the second integral, going from e to e to the power of m, mm. you know what, maybe let's assume, maybe to be exact, let's assume that m is greater than or equal 1 to guarantee that this upper bound is greater than lower bound. Doesn't really matter f of x. What is f of x? Well, in this case, f of x is x times f of natural log of x. While the first integral is elementary, is natural log of x, evaluated from 1 to e, and for the second interval, I will do the following. I will do substitution. Let me put x to be e to the power of y. Well, notice that then dx is e to the power of y dy. And what about the bounds of integration? Since x is from e to e to the power of m, y is just from 1 to m. So the second integral can be replaced by integral from 1 to m. Instead of dx, I can put e to the power of y dy. Here I have e to the power of y, f of natural log e to the power of y, which is perfect. Now, the first part, uh, natural log of e is 1, natural log of 1 is 0, so it's 1 plus the integral from 1 to m. And now let's take a look. e to the power of y is gone, and natural log of e to the power of y is y. So we have just dy over f of y, which can be replaced once again, doesn't, doesn't matter, we can put x instead of y.
All right. So we have derived the following. We have demonstrated that for every m greater than or equal 1, integral from 1 to e to the power of m dx over f of x is 1 plus the integral 1 to m dx f of x. And now, can this uh, can our improper integral converge? I say that no. Notice that if if the integral from 1 to infinity of dx over f of x would be finite, then we have the following problem. Taking m to infinity, then taking, taking m to infinity, taking m to plus infinity, we have a following problematic equation. Integral from 1 to infinity of dx f of x over f of x equals, here we have the very same integral, One plus, and since this integral is a finite number, we have this problematic equation, zero equals one, which should not be true. It's a contradiction. Contradiction, which means that actually our integral diverges. Our integral actually diverges, sorry, which means that our series of 1 over f of k actually also diverges by the limit comp by the integral test by the integral test for convergence And this is our answer. Our series actually diverges to plus infinity. Uh, establishing that our function was continuous, strictly increasing, and so on, it was all because to satisfy the assumptions of the integral test for convergence. Uh, and also notice that why was the integral useful? Integral was useful because of this one very important step. Because for integrals, we have integration by substitution. For series, there is no such thing as summing by substitution. Or at least nothing non-trivial. So yeah, it's a very nice problem from Putnam Competition. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've learned something new this time, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.